following podcast is being brought to you by the Defy Life Podcast Network. Bro, you still alive? Yeah, bro, I'm here. I'm here. I'm good. Nice. I know you was going through some things last week. Oh, was that pneumonia? What the hell you had? Yeah, I don't even. I ain't even go to the doctor. I saved myself for fifty dollars, and you know what I'm saying. I pulled the nigga move and just used for sick time and called out this motherfucker. So, anyway, fair enough. I don't. I don't know what it was, but he tried to get me. Uh, I, I fought that motherfucker too today. All the way back to life right now. And, well, uh, welcome back to yeah, unsupervised the spinoff. Man, brought to you by the Defy Life Podcast Network. You can catch us on go to life dot com for all of the media. And if you want to catch the actual podcast, the show itself, I probably should start with that, but. We are found at DefineLifePods.com, Spotify, uh, iTunes, Podcast Addict, Spreaker. I mean, check everywhere else that you are like getting podcasts, because that's a real thing. We probably and please like the social media. Like the social media page. We got our Facebook up and running for, for y'all listeners out there. Um, you know what I'm saying? We're going to be posting some great content. So uh, please excuse me. I'm a little little under the weather, but I'm weathering the storm. <laughs> Soldiering through. He had the pneumonia. I'm pretty much convinced. They told him it was a lightweight flu, but I think he had the pneumonia. It was something, man. It was something for real. But uh, it was crucial. It was, man. It took me out, bro. Like I, I, I didn't even go do the open mic with you, you know. So that it lets you know I was really. Not you know in my, my my right element. I shouldn't have been out in the public. Yeah, it'd have been too many people scared. Like, is this motherfucker spreading some shit? Like in the movie Outbreak. If I see a little monkey, I'm out. Man, and I didn't have a mask, so I couldn't even go full Beijing on you. Like I was gonna wear a mask and just talk to you any kind of way. Yeah. <laughs> like I was gonna go extra sub zero. But anyways, we got a good show for y'all today. You know what I'm saying? We got some, some great topics we're going to we'll go ahead and get into. Uh, so, so, you know what I'm saying? West Coast, Jay, you want to you go ahead and uh, you want to go ahead and start us off just a little bit? We gonna, we'll, we'll start Man, off I will, with a big for, bang. For a quick moment, I would like to give a shout out to the homie Money, who had things oh, to do. Oh, yes. He definitely had some, some serious things to do, Money. Uh, you know what I'm saying? If you, need, if you need me for anything, you already know. Uh, right. West but Jay. I'm pretty sure that Money was, uh, money was with Pooh. See, Pooh on the uh, the Fire Life flagship show. Okay. Pooh, uh, Pooh is good for, like, he apparently teaches superhero classes on Wednesdays. And I think that's where money went. Like, the first time I heard that money was gone, I was like, damn, is he out saving hoes again? And, like, they was like, nah, I think he in Pooh class because Pooh is superhero. And so money is learning how to be a superhero now so that he don't just got to have his cape on the safe house. Well, then, with that being said. <laughs> right. Right, right, right. On that note. Uh, Shots fired great, for nothing. Shout out Shots, to regular Scott. We had a great show. Shout out to money. You know what I'm saying? Shots fired at regular Scott. No, Shots, Shots fired was at, the Shots fired was at money. But they was like that. That's a regular Scott line. Gotcha, gotcha, mother. Yeah. Gotcha. But other well, than that, shout out to everybody, man. You know, Defy Life. I love all y'all. Uh, for real. You know what I'm saying? Just uh, Lenny Kim. What's going on? Y'all was talking to me any kind of way on your show. Yeah. <laughs> talking about um, is West Coast Jay from the West Coast? Like, is he is he on the West Coast? Lynn was like, No, I think he just from the West Coast. She was like, Well, I'm gonna call him East Coast Jay by West Coast. <laughs> <laughs> like damn shots it. fired at West Coast J just for nothing shots just fired at me shout out to the homie Uncle Oz good luck in the uh, battleground this fine evening past that money wanted to hear about it he ain't even here to hear about it but yeah 
We've been doing uh, stand-up comedy. Yeah, man. You know, Hollywood Paul Douglas been out there doing his thing. Sorry, I couldn't hear you this past Monday. They make me laugh. So I thought, hey, maybe I could tell a joke. So I signed up after him one day. I blame the rum. But we did all right. They invited us to another uh, open mic. And that particular night, I know for a fact, I ate a bowl of shit. It was awful. I didn't do well at all. <laughs> With the second one. The first one, I did well. Second one. No, oh, no, 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 no. It was unacceptable. I got the, the thrill of victory, the agony defeat in like an hour's time. <laughs> that was, it was, it was a tough crap in there. That was a tough crowd on the second go round, man. The first, the first one was uh, if we, if we were, this was a sitcom or, or like a series on HBO, we would have ended the night the moment you caught off stage, and old girl walked up to us like, "You guys did really good, Sharon, the uh, Eastern European looking chick, the buff chick." That would be Sharon. Yeah, shout out to Sharon. Shout out to Sharon. She's gonna be my girl's bodyguard one day. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, that that would, that would have been the moment they the end of the show. You know, cue the music because that was that was the perfectly timed moment of that night. That was the pinnacle. Let, uh, take it back, West Coast Jay, y'all out there listening. West Coast Jay immediately starts feeding me drinks when we go in. So, you know, we're both. Hey, first we're both, off, I asked if he wanted drinks. Okay, he did. He did ask, and I and me, I'm like, yeah, hey, yeah, you know, sure, why not? You know, and I'm looking, I'm trying to check the place out. It's looking real, real sketchy to a degree. So it looks like, like I said in my opening, I walked on a set in the Quentin Tarantino film. Okay, like the the, the bartender looked like the vampire of the set, <laughs> and she was, was crazy. looking real dust till dawning. That much but, is that much is true. But West Coast Jays feed me drinks, and we, and we get like. Two or three in, and next thing you know, he's like, he walks over to me and says, uh, so all the real comedians are all drinking water. And at that moment, I thought about it. I was like, huh, yeah, okay, well, we're past that moment. <laughs> you know? I so had I guess water not, in my defense not, right after that. Not real comedians, I guess. And then I thought about it. I said, like, man, fuck that. And? <laughs> I don't give a fuck. What the fuck were these motherfuckers doing? These dudes were li- literally going up with their water, and I noticed that all of them were reading off their phones, reading off pads, reading off their palms. And I'm like, yo, yo, me and West Coast Jay, we're about to give these cats a show for real. Like, they're about to actually see some ca- some dudes that appreciate the art of comedy and stand up comedy for one, because that's that's a whole different beast than just write, you know, writing comedy or you know trying to improv comedy stuff like that. But uh, it's a real thing. This uh. We got up there and, and straight up gave these these folks a good show, man. I mean, and uh, you know, they, good thing they didn't charge a cover to come in because a lot of cats went there and bombed at this open mic. Like it, it was, it was sad to see because the audience was just one of those real good 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 audiences. They they love to laugh. They they wanted to laugh. You know, you could you could have said anything in a funny way and they would laugh. So to get up there and bomb was I was like, man, that's that's tough to do in here. So the fact that. A couple of cats before his bomb, and then you know the British homie Matt. Shout out to Matt. He got up there and did his thing and kind of opened up for us. We we, we kind of really did like steal the show, man. It was, you know, I I honestly couldn't couldn't tell you who else. It was two more cats that came up after us, and we we didn't mean to be rude, but we kind of just like stole the show after we got off the stage. Like it was, when we were getting invited to, it was multiple conversations going on. We were getting invited to. The other set, you were talking to somebody else and a bunch of other people. It was a lot of different things going on. But it was a cool night, man. It was a real cool night. It was a great night. I met a corgi. It's my new, she might be my new favorite dog. But yeah, me and West Coast Jay, we, uh, we're doing a lot of stand-up. We're going we're to keep it moving. We're going to try to get some more clubs. Hopefully, we, we get enough material to where uh, we, can, we, can, we can book something, something serious so let some of y'all listeners see what we're doing. You know, we might even do a little segment on it when we do our visual uh, podcast. 
so, you know, it is what it is. He's pretty good. I think I, I do all right. But uh, moving on to these topics, man, let's 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 jump right into it, man. Because I know if money was here, he wouldn't talk about this. He would. Aaron Gordon got robbed. I'm going to just right. go ahead and get this, out this, there the directly. All-Star Weekend dunk contest. Like, Aaron okay, let's, Gordon let's talk about All-Star got weekend. robbed. Wait, let's just, let's just run through it. We got a little time. This is me. Let's, let's talk. So did you... I was coming down with the with the what did you call it, the pneumonia. I was coming down with that the day of All Star Weekend kicked off, like the skill challenge, all that. I was uh, I was laid up at the crib after I got off work, just watching it and like trying to trying to trying to get my head wrapped around. Am I actually getting sick or what? But anyways, obviously I did. So I end up getting to work, and I saw the end of the skill challenge, and I saw the three point contest, and I was like, "All right, Dylan Booker almost got another one," you know. He did, he did. I was proud of Buddy Hill, though. Buddy Hill came through in the end. Buddy Hill came through, and he represented for Sacramento right quick. He represented for Oklahoma right quick. He did, he did, because he was in it last year and didn't do so well, and uh, he said he'd be back, and he came back and won, you know. And I, and um, I'm not mad at that. I'm not mad at that. That was, you know, it is what it is. You either make the shots or you don't. Oh, and as for the skills challenge, real quick, though, uh, shout out to Bam Adebayo and all the big men who made all the little men look less skilled. They did. It was a trip. You start to see forwards and centers that are out playing the guards with little things, dribbling, passing. All the et ceteras. That's skill. awesome. Speaking of skill, on a, on a quick side note, did you see the Kevin Durant comment? We'll come back to the dunk contest. We'll, we'll, we'll round off that. But did you see the Kevin Durant comment? You know KD's been up on his feet, moving, running, doing drills. He's looking real, real easy money sniperish right now. Did you looking see that? real KD-ish? He's looking real Durantula. Like, uh, I mean, he's, he's, he's looking good. And, um... I'm not saying he's looking good to where he can just get out there and bust NBA ass like he like he like he did, but he's looking like, like he's he, used to. That's what I'm saying. Like, but he's looking like he'll walk into a, a LA Fitness right now and bust everybody ass. I ain't, I ain't gonna lie. So he got <clears> you at the 24 hour like, fitness, the LA yes. Fitness. He got you. Yes, right now he's looking like he got a good one one game in him, and he then got he, you at the, the he got you at the wreck. And somebody somebody got to take a spot. I feel like at the wreck, he probably got about two, three games. Maybe. But Kevin Durant said that in OKC, okay, in OKC, he didn't play. He played with a lot of athletes, but he did not play with a lot of skilled guys because he was the one always having to take the three-point shots, the, you know what I'm saying, the two-pointers. He was the one always having to, having to do things that required skill. And and then uh, when, he came to, uh, when he came to the Bay Area, he didn't have to be that guy so much. The only guy that was skilled like that. What do you? What do you? What do you? How do you take that comment? What do you think about that? Do you think that's fair, of Kevin Durant, to say? Shots fired at Russell Westbrook is what I. That's my first thought. I mean, I'm and not he said sure that why. It was, I mean, did he not see what Russ did? The, the, no, no. no. After he left, Russ. 100% got in his feelings and then lost his mind. Went absolutely insane and has now triple doubled since he left. Russ became one of the greatest immediately. So, 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 what do you, do you think that's fair to say about the other players? I think Stephen Adams is pretty skilled. Well, I, I do as well. I also think James Harden was skilled on that team, but they I turned James Harden skilled. away. I thought Serge Ibaka was skilled on that team, I definitely. but they traded Serge away. So KD is just, is just in his feelings then. I feel just... like KD can't play right now, and so he's still got to stay relevant. <clears throat> gotcha. And well, in the current culture that we're in, ushered in, in part by our president. Mm. Yeah, everybody can say whatever um, they want. You just get on Twitter and say what in the fuck you want to say. Well, whether or not it's right, I'm talking to you, hear, Antonio. Brown. Let's hear what you gotta. Let's hear what you gotta say about this dunk contest. Getting back to the topic at hand. 
Aaron so Gordon's we got, gotten we got, robbed. I, I think we have. I think this was now. a really good dunk contest. I really. I think this was. I think last year set the stage for Aaron Gordon to come back and win. I don't. I think it was well. I think, okay, I do, I, but I don't. That's that. I think that he was supposed to win. I think that what he did was like so effortless, but at the same time intricate with his dunks and creative that he should have won. Like there was just no question about, you know, the guy. He's basically like like Dominique and MJ going at it. Like if Zach, the thing, only thing they were missing was him and Zach Levine going head to head. And, you know what I'm saying? We all know Zach Levine got the bunnies. He won the dunk contest over Gordon, which everybody say Gordon got robbed on that one. I, I kind of think Robert, Gordon got robbed on that one. I watched that whole dunk contest. You was with me when I watched that I dunk contest. We, we were going crazy. When we he, watched when it he together. jumped over the mask, when he grabbed the ball and, and tucked it under him, Dude, he sat the on that was shit. on a hoverboard. When the when the when he grabbed the shit, he grabbed the shit and three sixty out the mascot hand on the hoverboard. Off the it hoverboard. Got, when he off went off under the, the legs hoverboard. like he was sitting down in a chair. What? When he sat on it? I when lost sat- my mind my, a little bit. I was gone. I, I, I wasn't there I, for a few minutes. But but And then this year this catching year. that joint off the side of the backboard, three sixty and like that? He could have and then so what my thing is with the judges is like, okay, you do know the boy could have put it between his legs, if, but that's just so that's easy at this point. And the cat who beat him, um, that's in Miami. Uh, my, shout out to Miami. Derek Jones Jr. Derek Jones Jr. for right, officially fine. calling. He was getting ready to do a dunk I had never seen before in my life, and I'll be honest, it made me fall down when he grabbed the ball. Off a dude ahead and went through his legs and still finished. That ain't the one for me. The one no, for me no. that that was the one just because he said because none of you've he ever won. seen this before. Because he won. I I I've seen people do stuff similar to that. And here here's my thing. Over somebody here, grabbing it off here's their my, head. Here's my thing. Here's why I, I'm telling you with with our generate with this new generation of, of hoopers and the and the air alert programs or whatever they call them the jump programs that they're using now, bruh, cats is flying. Okay, jump science is a real thing. So what I'm saying is, like, this cat when he went between the legs and went against the grain 360, that's hard to do. A 360 against the grain is hard to do first and foremost. Okay. Yeah, but you are talking like a dunk. I'm talking between the legs against the grain, and no, and those that's who's who's judging. That's who was judging them was dunkers. So but what I'm was, saying is, you're talking like a dunker. I and most of the people who listen to this are not dunkers because a we're physically not six foot four, six foot six. In both of those guys' cases, six foot nine. And so even even still, the fact that they have the coordination and and you know what I'm saying the focus and the, and you know the 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 muscle memory to pull that off and the athleticism on top of all of that, to me that was that took me back watching these two go at it last year. It took me back to when Vince Carter, Steve Francis, and um, Tracy McGrady went at it. Like that was that was that was 2016. Was, Aaron Gordon was in it in 2016. That's when, but and then so when them cats went at it, I was like, "Yo, the dunk contest is officially back for real." But this year, yo, them, them dunk, the only thing I didn't like, the, my man Derrick Jones Jr. won. He didn't he didn't do a variation with his dunk. He kept going between the legs. Like after his first three dunks, like the first three dunks that I saw the highlights, I was like, "Well, is he's doing the same dunk?" Yeah, it's dope that he's doing it, and he's between the legs on everything. But it's like. I've kind of already seen that. You know what I'm saying? Like him yeah, and Eric. I mean, Eric, Eric, but Eric oh boy, shout out this. Isaiah Ryder with the East Bay Funk Dunk. And acknowledge that that shit is hard. It like, is. That's still a high level dunk at the end of the day. Period. Ain't nobody, ain't everybody just going out there. Jumping. Ain't nobody and just, do, nobody's done it in a game dunk. like that this Not- year. No, I've never you know seen mean, nobody that's a in a game. Difficult thing to do. 
go between the legs. To go in the game well, situation. And again, where Derek Brooks got me specifically was when he jumped over the dude, took the ball from on top of his head. Derek Jones. Then Who? went Derek between Brooks. his legs and still finished with authority. Like the key was finish with authority. So okay, so if he got you with that, then then he didn't then then my man Gordon didn't get robbed, is what I'm saying. No, 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 no. And then Aaron Gordon jumped over a dude seven foot five inches tall, grabbed it off the top of his head. Sure, he nut grazed the top of his head. He's seven oh, five. I'm not oh. mad at that. With Double the nut hands, shack like. Not the nut graze. Brett, don't ever be seven foot five and let me legit jump over you. Vince Carter jumped over a dude seven two in the Olympics. We see it. I seen that. That was a game done. That was a real live game. He nut grazed the fuck out of him too, though. He nut grazed him at seven what? two. He kind of this kinda, dude nut grazed a seven fiver and two handed it. Yeah, he did. He did, man. Yeah. Aaron he, Gordon got robbed. Yeah. Like I stand by. Like the next time I go to, I'll be in Orlando next year. Disney World will be fifty. I'll be in Orlando next year. And I'm going to go see Aaron Gordon play when I'm down there. Because I want to see it in person. I just want to see if you are. Are you just a dunker or can you play basketball? And the honest answer is, I believe he can play basketball. Do you but think uh, he happens to be a dunker. Do you think D-Wade um, <clears throat> was uh, shaving points for the home team? Yep. I think that uh, D Wade held the heat down, and I'm not mad at him for it. Be honest, I'm not. I just I thought that D Wade was correct when he walked off initially, and just said it should be a tie. Yeah. But then when the points came up and I ate for jumping over a dude. Seven foot five. Then they gave him a nine. You're seven foot five. Shaquille O'Neal is not seven foot five. And well, you jumped over somebody taller than Shaq and two hand dunked like Shaq with authority. That's insane. That is an outlandish number to jump over. You literally jumped over 77 inches. Yeah. You got right, bro. Shouts out to my man, Aaron Gordon. He did his thing. He entertained us. He said he's done with it. Next yeah. year, we'll see what he does with the three-point contest. And hopefully, we get a a great repeat of uh, an electrifying dunk contest again because uh, I'm all for that shit. Shouts out to everybody that was in the dunk contest. Shouts out, shout out to the winner, Derrick Jones Jr., Miami Heat. The Miami Heat doing big things. And you know what I'm saying? They're supposed to, I guess, make a playoff run. We'll see what they do with Jimmy Buckets. I'll be watching, keeping track, talking shit about it, all that. But moving on, we've got another topic here we're going we're gonna to touch on. You know, um, being from Carolina and – Having the pleasure of uh, witnessing the Super Bowl from from my home team, uh, well, at least of the parents, um, happened at least twice in my lifetime, I can say. Um, with them being an expansion team, uh, they always have a place in my heart. Panthers keep pounding when Cam came along. You know, I can't lie when I when I didn't I didn't you know if I, if I didn't support what they were doing. If I, if I want to say that, I can't lie. Um, but my point is. I love the Panthers, and seeing Luke Keekley retire at the age he did, the time he did, was unexpected. Um, of course, we all know Keekley has been suffering concussions. We've seen happen numerous times that he didn't come out the game, and of course that we know about when they put him on concussion protocol, and who knows how many other concussions and bumps they had he's had throughout his career. 
But Luke Keekley retired. So with that being said, with what he did when he played, is he considered to be a Hall of Famer or not? West Coast Jay, what you got for me? Luke was in the game, and he was a beast in the game. Until three years ago. And three years ago, he started getting concussed constantly. I feel like the injuries derailed the Hall of Fame career. Oh. Shots fired. So, no. I don't think that Luke Keekley belongs in Canton, Ohio. All right. Well, so he played what? Middle linebacker. He's a seven-time Pro Bowler. Five-time first-team All-Pro. Two-time second-team All-Pro. NFL Defensive Player of the Year, 13. Art uh, Rooney Award in 17, three-time Butkus Award, uh, two-time NFL Tackle Leader, NFL Defensive Rookie of the Year. He was the ACC Defensive Player of the Year. Uh, the Bronco Nargofsky Trophy and uh, Butkus Award in college, the Lombardi Award, and the Lot Trophy. He was the ACC Defensive Rookie of the Year as well. And Three times first team all ACC. Yeah, career tackles 1,900 and, oh, excuse me, 1,092. He had 12.5 sacks, 18 interceptions, 67 pass deflections, seven forced fumbles, nine fumble recoveries, and two defensive touchdowns in his career. And you're saying he's not a Hall of Famer? I'm saying he's not a Hall of Famer. Money is going to be mad. There you have it, folks. Well, who would you say, I mean, comparing Luke's game to somebody, who would you say he's compared to? I feel like Patrick Willis of the San Francisco 49ers is the best comparison. Here's why. Neither of them want a ship. They both were seven-time pro bowlers. Yeah. Both were five-time. Like, if you want to run the numbers down, you're talking about Patrick Willis, and I don't think Patrick Patrick Willis Willis is a Hall of Famer. He has 950 tackles, and he has 20.5 QB sacks, only eight interceptions. And he has 16 forced fumbles, never recovered any, and two touchdowns as well. So he has a little bit less tackles, more sacks, same amount of interceptions, and no fumble recoveries, but way more forced fumbles. Uh, Pee Willie was a monster. Turnover for Pee- turnover, Pee- turnover they decorated. were there. He's more decorated than Patrick is. You know, I, sack I see, for I tackle, Pee Willie was there. Tackle, Luke was there. In reality, I wish we had money right now. Because money as A, a fantasy beast, and B, a pure Panthers fan. So he was been fun to listen here, to. We still gotta go into politics next. So that, that wraps it up for Keekley. Keekley, I think Keekley's a, a Hall of Famer. I think he'll get there. Um if not, he'll be in the, in the Panther Hall of Fame and, and always a part of the Keep Pounding movement. Um, without well, question, Shea, huh? but in my opinion, not a first ballot without question. He shouldn't get on this first ballot. So, if he gets uh, on this third, third fourth bills, ballot, though? I'm good. Agreed. Agreed. I think I think he's he, he probably second ballot. But anyway, West Coast Jay, we got we got to pay some bills, man. Go ahead and let the people know uh, where we coming from, man. What we talking about? That's a fair statement. We know what's going on? Let's go ahead and get that done.
Welcome to the Defy Life Podcast. For in-depth, entertaining, often hilarious, always real talk about sports, culture, lifestyle, and current events, join us and become part of the movement. The Defy Life Podcast. New episode every Wednesday, everywhere your favorite podcasts are available. Brought to you by the Defy Life Podcast Network. This is Defy Life. So back up in this thing. Y'all check out the fire life. That's the flagship, man. If, we, if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't even be on this thing. That's what's up. That's you know what's what up. Saying? Shout back. out to J. Al Poo. Everybody else on the network. The the regular Scott, the Uncle Oz. Uh, Lynn Kim. Yo, CL. Oh, pardon me. Yusef CL. I mean, we already did shout uh, out to need, everybody, man. Everybody. Fuck all that, man. I mean, we love them and all, but damn, nigga. We did all the shout outs already at the beginning. We're going to shout them out at the end, out. possibly. What is it? Damn. See, that's why I can't let certain niggas get the mic uncontrolled, be unsupervised. Because that's what they just run off at. Doing double shout outs. Who does Anyway, so, so uh, coming back, we got some. Um, some breaking entertainment news, I guess. I don't know, but I'm gonna throw it in because my my lovely lady just uh, she just came in here looking real cute. And uh, anyway, she told me that on Black Ink Chicago, Black Ink Chicago, there's a, a, um, a reality personality named Four. He's a rapper, okay, and he does tattoos and shit. And, you know, um, he had a little segment where they they were trying to see if some girl that four ran into at a party and had some relations with possibly in the bathroom 17 years ago, got pregnant and got a 17 year old now and waited 17 years to hit this nigga up. Mind you, he's now on a reality TV show. Doing a little, you know, doing a little tours with the music. He got a little, he's got a little, a little hit song where they put it on the, the opening of the show. You know, he, he got a little, he got a little fame going on. But the nigga don't remember the chick from 17 years ago. Like he's like, man, you know, I don't know. So anyway, he met up with the chick because he's like, if I got a kid out there, I want to make sure you know I'm not being a dad, be dad. And plus, I'm on TV. You know what I'm saying? Because he had that beat that. He knows what that's like. So he, he goes to see if the kid is his. And just like Murray, Maury, is it Maury? Maury. Just like on Maury, they did like the little fraternity, paternity test. It's not fraternity, but it's paternity. Paternity. Shut up, niggas! Fraternity. Who? Paternity. So they did a paternity test. Anyways, and, um,. They swab each other at this restaurant when they met up for the first time. Like, hey, you might be my dad. Put this Q-tip in your mouth. You know what I'm saying? Let me see. Yeah, they meet and they, the first time. They hanging out. Okay, they, okay. I don't remember. I'm giving you all the appearance version. I don't really know all the show like that. But they met up, okay? And there's a few times. And in these few times, they got a mouth swab done. And come to find out, not on the show, through Instagram, this nigga done posted that he ain't the daddy. So this whole shit I'm watching is a sham right now. That, that's about to, sure that, that Hopefully it's going to be on the show because my girl watched the shit. So I watch it because she like it. I love it if she like it. Okay? Happy, happy white, happy life type thing. So that's our thing. So this breaking entertainment news. <laughs> you need to go on Lenny Kim. But anyways. And what just happened. But anyways. That that's that what that's what our female listeners. News. That was our that was that was our for our female listeners if we have any. You got the update about Black in Chicago from your boy Hollywood Paul Douglas. Anyways, moving on on our list. Since money ain't here, we're gonna have to talk about some some politics. Now we're not gonna go in depth to everything. Some of y'all that's listening, 
might be like, thank God, because money be going in. But no, you need to know what the fuck is going on with your politics. And that's what money's here for, because, you know, a lot of different people in this uh, in the society we live in don't know what the fuck is going on, don't even have the slightest clue, and either waste their vote or don't vote or vote for the wrong person because they don't know what the fuck is up. In real life, you got to do the research. If you don't do the research, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what you're talking about. So... so the president We're not gonna go has pardoned seven people go. on Tuesday. Nigga. Talking so, about so February talk, 19th, talk about some, 2020. Some petty, some petty party politics. And seven petty people. party politics. The president is currently pardoned. How many people? West Coast? All right, I'm going to give you one, including the junk bond king, Michael R. Milken. And Tell us Bernard B. Carrick. Who are these he people? used to be a New York City police commissioner. Apparently he just in jail. So My he personal just, favorite he though. Just Rod Blagojevich. Yeah. Mostly because I like saying that dude's name. It ain't got nothing to do with anything else. Blagojevich is fun to say. He was the governor of Illinois. He did things. He was sentenced to 14 years in 2011 for trying to sell or trade to the highest bidder the Senate seat that Barack Obama vacated when he was elected president. Nigga. And Trump, He's pardoned now. Just know that. Trump about, basically know like, that okay, about your country. So I'm going to get my boy out. Cause I know he'll do, some, he'll make a deal, basically. He'll cut a deal, so I'm gonna let him get him on out. You know what I'm saying? I feel that because, but the, see, the, and that's the thing about the president, man. It's like he do nigga things, okay? And he say nigga shit sometimes. He do, and a lot of times he says dumb shit. And then he turn around and do some nigga shit on top of the dumb shit he said. So it's like I'm torn like, sometimes. Right. I feel I'm like with we him gotta sometimes. explain nigga shit. Okay, like, go I ahead. feel like we actually got to tell people what we talking about, just so people don't think that we're we're sitting here praising niggas, but we're also not disparaging. I'm not, I'm not exactly. That's what I'm trying to. It's exactly. So, for instance, his niggardry, you know, when the nigga don't know what's going on, right? And you know how you you come into class late or you come to work late and there's some shit that happened, but you ain't got the memo yet. So you end up saying some dumb shit that lets everybody know you ain't caught up to what's going on yet. And then you just play this shit off like it ain't nothing. The nigga said, I've been on the phone with the president of the U.S. Virgin Islands, though, all day. We've been trying to work some shit out. The nigga said that, and that's some nigga shit, because he obviously showed up to work late and didn't know that he was the president yet. He didn't get the memo. Of the U.S. Virgin Islands, he didn't. No, he, he didn't, knew he was he, the president. That's the one thing he actually knew. Okay, but he didn't know he was the president of the U.S. Virgin Islands, though. Yet, he didn't know that yet. He showed up late and didn't know what was going on. He just said some shit. Okay, he just said some nigga shit. So I'm gonna take you a little bit deeper into this nigga shit, right quick. Rod Blagojevich, in 2010, while he was awaiting trial. He was a contestant on The Celebrity Apprentice. You know, the one that was hosted by the current well, then season. just Donald Trump. Now he's currently the president, but then he was Donald Trump. You he was just getting his homies off. On he some is. nigga shit. Like, bro, it's the same dude that was probably like when when they was at the they, they went to that one party member. They went to that party, 
And then, and then Melania has showed up at the party. And and Rob Blagojevich was like, nah, he not in the back. He ain't even over there. Yeah, I don't even know if he's here. So you was telling me you was telling me earlier about the cat from WikiLeaks. The, so the president the president tried to pardon the dude from WikiLeaks. What's his name? Assange, Julian Assange. Assange. That's what we're talking that about. That dude, that guy. So that dude's Julian like Julian Assange, founder he's, of WikiLeaks. He's, he's not okay to just walk around the U.S. Like you just can't do that. You know what I'm saying? Like you just, he's just not going to do that. So the president offered to pardon him if he told the people. That Russia ain't had nothing to do with none of the shit that they helped him get into office. Yeah, yeah that entire Russian hack that showed all of Hillary Clinton's emails. Nah, see, all Julian Assange got to do is not even be there. If he wasn't even there for that when that had happened, remember how he was in the kitchen? Right. And then Just tell and him that you, you know what happened in the kitchen? You tell them that didn't happen. You, you don't I'll know let, what happened in the kitchen? I'll let you. All right, I'm, I'm going to tell you what back. happened in the kitchen. Julian Assange uh, just got to say he didn't know uh, about the kitchen. That's and all then he got to do, though. He's out. And they're not going to try to come kill him. And like, shoot this him. is a dude. Julian Assange is a dude that was in. A different country in an embassy that was besieged by heavy metal music because they didn't want him to rest. Like, dude could not leave the embassy, but he also couldn't turn the music off. He's a dude that he can't come back to the United States because, unfortunately, then we have to prosecute him. President's offering to pardon him. Just for saying Russia ain't had nothing to do with nothing. Right. So basically, he wants them to he wants him to make some shit up because they've already proven that Russia has something to do with all that shit. If y'all didn't know. Yeah, but the proven was based on Julian Assange's website, WikiLeak. Exactly. And they just want him to denounce what tell he created. Them, basically, tell them you made that up. Tell them you were wrong. <laughs> These documents you got a hold of and put out is not for real the right documents. But in our current theme, that's some nigga shit, bro. That's some nigga shit, bro. He's basically saying, look, bro. Now, the only reason why we coming after you is because you broke a law that showed us breaking the law. And by breaking the law while showing us breaking the law, you, you, you want it. And you can't do that no more. Here. But. We will forgive that and forget about it. If you, However, we will if you forgive tell them and forget about it. The same people that we said, you know, you broke the law too, while showing that we broke the law. If you tell them that we didn't break the law, we'll forgive and forget about you breaking the law. Yeah. Like that's. So. And ultimately, he's not breaking the law. When, when we say that some nigga he's, shit, like, he's, I need you to understand. Freedom of speech. And the word nigga. That's just some nigga shit. The word nigga in particular, though. That's where I'm stuck. Because we've said a lot of niggas. Because a nigga act like he ain't riding dirty already, bro. Bro. It's like, this, how, 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 the how best you part is, over the nigga that's riding the dirty is, don't give a fuck. Without a seatbelt on, but you gonna try to check the cop on him speeding. Like, nigga, you was going fast, too. Wait a minute, bro. What about the blunt, though? 
I know it's just a plant, but it's illegal. Okay. What about the seatbelt, my nigga? Okay. What about that? On top of speeding. Nigga, your plates is bad. But no, you were speeding too, sir. You were recklessly driving. As an officer of the law, you got to obey the law as well. <laughs> you know, you try to and check the cops. The best part about the president. He can do it. Is the worst part about the president. Like, I'll be honest. He could be a nigga to everybody and be like, well, wait a minute. I know. The president know do nigga I shit. Did some fucked up shit. But you know what? I'm going to go on Twitter. And I'm going to tell you some other shit. And that's what you're going to pay attention to. Motherfuckers, how about that? They just... And you know what? I'm going to get my own way to jail. I know he fucked up and he got caught doing it. But you know what? I'm president. And I forgive that shit. I forgive him. I forgive him. Y'all okay? should forgive him. <laughs> Stop wearing a long ass. Mind your business. He tell okay? everybody else that that other shit was some bullshit. Right. As long as he tell them that, it's cool. The president might get the nigga of the week honors. Right. We need to have the donkey today. It's like breakfast club. No, I apologize to my grandmother and to a, to a bunch of people <laughs> for hearing me say the the way that I'm saying it. Mom, I'm my just, bad. The dude. But the president's a nigga. The dude be doing shit that's like, bro. He can, and he knows. He can get away with it. I mean, dog, I, I can't even begin to even talk about the shit. This nigga fired, he fired the head of the FBI, bro, and was like, wait a minute, you doing your job? And you going to tell them some shit on me? Nigga, you fired. What the fuck is you thinking you did? Yeah, you but think? bro, that's old nigga shit. Bro, I don't even, that's old nigga shit. That we this did is it, nigga though. shit that in the last 12 hours. Oh, that's what I'm saying. That's what we doing nigga shit, though. And getting away with it. That's right. a thing. They That's motherfucking had thing. He was like, oh, you're going to have a hearing to impeach me. You better tell me you, you don't want to hear no evidence. <laughs> you you tell, tell all him. you got to do is just tell him. Tell him, yeah. tell him you, I don't want to hear nothing. You don't want to hear nothing. Okay? You can do it. It's part of the rules, nigga. Just, just hear me out. That's all it takes. Bruh. So... So, to shout out to money, get this talk about politics. The way we hey, talk money. about politics, we are still talking about politics. <laughs> but <laughs> the president be doing nigga shit, man. That's all I'm saying. He be doing hundred <laughs> percent nigga shit. But 100%. the craziest thing is, like everybody associates nigga with black people, but he be no. doing nigga shit, and he it, they do, they do. Majority of people. If you were to do a poll on the street right now, just random people, and you walk up to them and you said, hey, if I said the word nigga, what would you associate that with? Yeah, they the would be like, they would be people. blushing not to say a black man, you know, or a black person. That's what they would uh, say. That'd be, yeah, black person, black. Come on, man. Something or other. There you go. However, so my point is, for, if you for actually want to go back to the word, what is, what a nigger nigger comes from niggardly. Nigger Lee, to be technical, according to Webster's Dictionary, means cheap. As this nigga tries to be scholastic in you the heard background, that shit, right? in the background, okay? Sorry, guys. This nigga Jason trying to, a nigga. this nigga West Coast J, babe, this nigga is trying to read some shit from the internet in the background, trying to understand all smart, because we talk about niggas. Well, actually, when you look up the word nigger Lee, and from the Latin breakdown, and all of a sudden in the background you hear, man, motherfucker, yeah. talking about niggas. <laughs> talking about niggas. That was a real try, thing. Trying to be a smart nigga. See, you a smart nigga. I like you. You know what? You know what? Agree, nigga. I don't have to take this. I can end Agree, this show. Nigga. How about that? Agree, nigga. I like that. Oh, you know what? Nah, but nah, I, know you, I know you got something for the end of this show. Talking we do, man. What you, we what do. you got? Okay, so to wrap everything up, I hope all the listeners know that I have been single and I've taken some antihistamines. And I'm proud of myself because I was able to say that one right now. And I'm hoping that, you know, my lady doesn't try to make me do a bunch of stuff for her because I am a little pussy whoop. But. 
point is I love her and if you have somebody in your life you should love them and um, because when you're sick and you're down and you're out and you get old you're going to need that person so be nice to them and you know to carry us out like I always say if you see somebody in need you know just talk to them and what I mean by that is you ain't got to you know throw yourself in somebody's life to help them through something or to do something you know don't ever take on something that you can't bear or that you can't you know uh, handle within your own wheelhouse of your responsibilities from day to day but sometimes you know sometimes people just need somebody to talk to and it can help them realize something that they couldn't see themselves because they're too close to it and so that's why I always leave every every show you know um, with that statement and uh, because I, I believe in, in life and I, and I know I'm saying you ain't got to take responsibility, but I know life happens in those moments to take responsibility, but sometimes we just need, need a little bit of help to, you know, find our way. So with that being said, you see somebody in need, you talk to them, you never know. <laughs> you just may save a life. Um, but anyway, uh, tune in again. I did, but whatever. Um, it gets me. And you can try to cut me off as much as you like, but I'm still gonna finish. I love you. I love you too. Uh, so there's that. But in reality, thank you guys for tuning in. Money will be back next week. And, you know, as soon as we get our super co- superhero college, man, money's gonna be on point. He got his cape and everything. It's gonna be right. Only seven people from left to right. Hoes, regular people, it don't matter. So you said you said money gonna be doing this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He in super co- he in superhero college right now. I'm he pretty sure he's going to pull school. You, you just said this nigga saving hoes two or three times. So he he gonna be a super saver hoe nigga. Man, you man, if you would have been listening to us back on the Defy Life show, you know where that's coming from. Got it. Don't be calling me out saying I don't be listening to the show either, motherfucker. Okay, I do listen when I can to when I see it on, yeah, on the links. But you would have had to be okay, listening on, way on, on, back. Man, money was well, on that show wasn't. for a while. Hey, maybe I wasn't. But that don't mean I don't love the brand now. Just like some yeah. of our listeners now. They're going to pick up and be like, oh, we ain't listen when it first started, but we here now. And that's all that matters. That's how you spread love, man. You don't get hung up on, on other shit. You was partying in there, man. That's fair. We was partying. It's back in the day, yeah. you know. You about I now? just got out the offices in Nebraska to fire life, so it's good. <laughs> but past that, yeah, man, don't be a jerk. Again. Be excellent to everyone. Yeah, man. Treat everybody the way you want to be treated. Just yeah. don't be a jerk. That's how you end it. That's all I got. That's good, though, man. I like that. You know? I like that. We'll catch up with y'all next week. And I hope you enjoyed. Until then, y'all. As money always say, if you ain't rocking with the fire life. What is your life about? Peace.